And we welcome you and everybody. We are back. It is another edition of the Dairy Brothers Tribecast on WaitingForNextYear.com. All-Star Break Edition. And boy, oh boy, the Tribe just, this was a drip too hard performance today in Cincinnati. The Tribe wallops the Reds 11-1. to Matt and Todd Dairy with you. Todd, the team goes in on a high note on the break with an absolute shellacking of the Reds today. Six straight wins going into the break after last weekend where they got embarrassed by the Orioles. This is stunning, but it's exciting. I want to talk about the Orioles, actually. Uh, no, seriously, to bounce back from 26 to nothing and then win the next five games is very impressive. you got to give them credit. got to give credit where credit is due, for sure. Um, it's almost a bummer that the All-Star break is here because... I, I feel like we're peaking right now. Am, am I am I crazy? No, not at all. We're peaking right now. Of course we are. Yeah, I mean it's a beautiful thing. I mean today's game, eleven to one. Greg Allen, the great everyday GA. They brought him back the weekend just so they can have an extra bat. He should be on the roster, anyways. Four for six with a triple and a homer, and he made an unbelievable diving catch in center field. That man should be on the roster. We'll get into that, I'm sure. All-Star breaks here, 50 and 38. Love the way they're playing. Bummed out that the All-Star break is here because they're playing so well. You know, you, you've said from day one not to look at the standings. We knew the Twins built a double-digit lead on the Indians. Minnesota is the better baseball team. They've gotten some injuries lately. Odorizzi out. Rosario out. Nelson Cruz has been in and out of the lineup. And all of a sudden, it's down to, and the Twins are playing now as we record this, either going to be five and a half, or six, uh, or six and a half, excuse me, by the weekend, uh, by the All-Star break. And for all the hand-wringing that we've done, and for all the bashing of Tito and the bunting and everything else, the bats are starting to wake up. The kids are starting to get it. Jake Bowers is starting to get it. He hit a prodigious blast today. And, and people can say, oh, well, it's the Reds. It's not a last-place team. All the Indians have been doing is beating up on the Patsies. Cincinnati's not a bad baseball team. I know their offense isn't as good as people thought. Their pitching's been better. We avoided Castillo this weekend. We avoided Gray. I get it. But what we do best, starting pitching, some timely hitting, and, and, and Tito pulling some strings, all came together this week in, in sweeps of Kansas City and Cincinnati. You know, the Bowers blast today was beautiful. You mentioned Allen in the defense. Yesterday, Mercado in the defense and center. Guys are catching the ball. Jose Ramirez hitting the ball a little bit harder. Roberto Perez, what can you say? But this team's Let's clicking. Talk about the MVP of the Cleveland Indians, Roberto Perez. He is. While we're at it. Four for five yesterday with another. He, you know, did you know that entering the season, he had 25 career homers, and he has 16 right now? Crazy. It's ridiculous. You know, I know you, you mentioned you can only, you know, you know the, the, you're beating up on the passies. Listen, two things. The American League is the has and have nots, okay? It's really Yankees, Rays, Red Sox, Indians and Twins, and the Astros and the A's and the Rangers. Everybody else is pretty much out of it. So half of the league is not even trying. So you really should be beating up on these bad teams, right? So I, I, well, I, I think, hold on, I think the White Sox are trying, and I think that they're on the come. They're, they're like in the middle. They almost have their own tier, yeah, like you said. They're in the middle, but, yeah, I agree with that. But still, they're 41 and 44. It's not like they're, you know, they're pitching as garbage outside of Giolito. So, but, but the point is, if you're a good team, we, we are in the, it's the haves and the have-nots, and we're one of the haves, which is nice. You know, the Twins are, uh, have fallen back to earth. I still, like, I said it for weeks, I'm going to continue to say it. Just let's worry about ourselves and take care of our own business. And things will fall as they may. I truly believe that they will be fine. You know, Kipnis is still riding that hot streak. Jose Ramirez is hopefully going to continue what we saw over this last week, which would be enormous for this team. And the fact that they are where they are, can, and, and, and you consider, if I would have told you at the beginning of the year, you were going to get nothing from Kluber because he broke his arm. You were going to get nothing from Clevenger, essentially. You were going to get nothing from Carrasco, essentially. And Clev- and uh, and uh, Bauer was going to have an, uh, not nearly as good of a year as he had the year before. And the one starter that made the All-Star game was going to be Bieber. You would have told me I was crazy. And you would have had to have dipped into the minor leagues for Yefi Rodriguez, uh, Zach Plesak, a start from Savali. Yeah, Savali. 
Volley. And, yeah. and and this bullpen of you know a lot of no name guys and people that around the league have no clue about you know Nick Whitgren and others getting the job done. Uh, you know even yesterday, two two game Roberto uh, unties it with a two run bomb, and then the pen kind of comes in and, and helps Bieber out with Brad Hand. Um, uh, the games in Kansas City where um, you know Plesac had to be pulled early, which was okay. The pen did its job. Guys came in and got it done. You know, Nick Goody right now blowing people away. Uh, uh, unbelievable. Uh, his, he, has, he has really shown me something. I, he was very good two years ago. And last year, he wasn't great. And then he got hurt. And when he came up, he wasn't the greatest. But he has said in interviews I've seen, he said, you know, my first five, six outings or so have essentially been like spring training to me. And now I feel like myself. And you can see. And Tito really trusts him. And, you know, it's always interesting to see who Tito ends up trusting. Right now... He's trusting Goody and Whitgren over almost anybody else in that pen. Well, and he's well, he's going to just about everybody. And again, the Indians win eleven to one today. Matt and Todd Derry, the Derry Brothers Tribe cast. We were had a week off hiatus as I was out of town. And um, man, oh man! And by the way, we are brought to you by a new sponsor, our good buddy, Doctor Ben Hornstein, and the Center for Advanced Dentistry. That's right, we got a dentist That's on right. on board. I can't believe I can't believe we've now gotten multiple sponsors. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm a good sale. I'm pretty good at sale. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the team's sitting, Todd. It's amazing. The team is sitting uh, as we as we speak here, 88 games in at 50 and 38, a season best, and it keeps climbing. 12 over 500. I don't know if they're going to catch Minnesota. All of a sudden, here come the Twins for three out of the break. Um, you know, people a hand ring about. You know this team not being very good, and 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 we've even said it, and you've even tweeted it sometimes. They got four All Stars, four, and this wasn't some hometown feel good addition. Carlos Santana deserves to start at first base. He's been on fire. I was listening today to to Jeff Brantley and Marty Brenneman a little bit, the great Marty Brenneman, calling the Reds game on Sirius, and Brantley was talking about how hot Carlos Santana is and how. The guy takes so many pitches, and he works counts, and he's he's a, he's a torture on starting pitchers. It was nice to hear from an opposing radio guy. You know, Bieber makes the All Star team, like you said. Frankie, of course, the two bomb day yesterday, and then you throw in um, who am I missing? Bieber. Oh, Brad Hand. Bieber, Brad Hand, Carlos, and Frankie. I mean, Brad Hand's been, been been money, so. You know, you can make an argument for Roberto Perez too, and obviously James McCann has, has really come on for the White Sox, and you feel good about him. He's a good guy. He's, um, oh, he's play- a good guy. Okay, I, listen, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm Roberto Perez's biggest fan. I would have loved to have had him make the All Star team, especially this year being in Cleveland. He's been so unbelievable. I know Frankie is obviously the best player on the team, but I really, truly believe the MVP of the team this year is Roberto Perez. I do. Well, I, he, not only, but not, he, not, not only, only not offense, only with the, right. With the, yeah, not only with the bat, but, but talk about the fact that he's had to deal with, we, we've had eight or nine, we've had nine different starting pitchers this year because of all the injuries, a lot of them being young guys that they've brought up, and he just knows what he's doing. He knows how to handle these guys. I, I mean, and you know that he signed his last contract was five years for and nine million dollars. Guy's a freaking bargain. Well, that was a couple of years ago. Yeah. Right? There's plenty. There's plenty of plenty of years left on that deal. Yep. Yep. You know it. I love Robo, man. I, I am. I'm. I'm so thrilled for him that he's having such a great season. He worked so hard. I think people kind of forget, like when Jan was traded, and everyone loved Jan and all that. I think people forget in 2016. Down the stretch, and in October, Robo was your catcher. He was. He was. He was the starting catcher. Jan was the backup because Jan was hurt most of that year. So I think that kind of gets lost, and people, you know, I, I think most of the stigma is gone. But uh, you know, he was always viewed as kind of a backup, and now he's really coming to his own. He's one of the best catchers in the American League. Let, let, let's talk some a little bit about Shane Bieber making the All Star team because obviously it was a late ad because Mike Miner pitched is pitching today for the Rangers and actually pitching pretty well and he deserves to be there and because guys and I think Major League Baseball did this right a few years ago because guys are out and, and can't pitch Tuesday because they pitch Sunday and that's yeah. the way it goes they add more pitchers and yes it kind of waters it down a bit when I see Brandon Woodruff make the game and uh, 
um, you know, Team D's fantasy closer, Vasquez from the Pirates make the game. The guy like never pitches, he pitches once a week. I may have to, I may have to um, uh, get rid of him. But regardless, um, Shane Bieber deserves it. And even yesterday, day off after the Royals series, goes into Cincinnati. Reds playing pretty well. In a, in a dogfight in a very good division, the, the most competitive division in baseball, the NL Central, since he improved, uh, a lot of big names in their offense that aren't hitting, but they got a ton of home runs. We talked about Dietrich before, and Yasiel Puig, every ball he's hitting is hard right now. And Bieber went in there yesterday and shut him down. Today, Bauer did the same thing. But, you know, Todd, like you said, here's a fifth starter at the start of the year, a guy that was not highly regarded, you know, maybe by maybe the organization did, Regard him, but we didn't know him even going into last year. That has made the the way up from Double A AA to Triple A to here, and now named as an All Star. That's that's what this organization organization is going to have to be about: is developing a young pitcher like that that can be under control for a long time and that has success. Yeah, I think the unsung heroes of this organization are the scouts and the player development people, because. If the Indians do not have that great draft after the 20, in 2017, where they got Bieber and Plesak uh, and Savali, I mean, you, you know, you, who knows? The, the depth of this pitching staff and the way that they've developed has really saved the season. I mean, like I said before, if, if you go into this year and I tell you on April 1st that you're going to have no Kluber and, and essentially no Carrasco and no Clevenger, and and I think you think you're dead, and rightfully so. And they, the, the development of these young pitchers so rapidly, you know, these guys were drafted two, three years ago, and they're already up in the major south of what need be. And, you know, obviously, Jeffrey Rodriguez as well. It, it's been a huge savior to this season, you know, and, uh, you know, they've also been able to obviously pick up some good bullpen guys this year, too. So, you know, as much as we have hated on this team and bashed this team, and they suck. They were essentially the same record they've had the last couple of years. So, looking forward to the second half. That's for sure. No, for sure. And the kids are here, and they're and they're producing. You know, Oscar Mercado uh, struggling a little bit at the plate right now. But you know what? Got a bunt down yesterday that they needed. Made an unbelievable. Uh, uh, Got a uh, bunt down. Come on. No, he did. Come on. That scored a run. I'm kidding. Put it in play. <laughs> Although today's Kipnis bunt in a one-one game in the fifth. Uh, uh, when he um, it's disgusting, it's disgusting. When he's batting so clean, clean I think it was <laughs> let's go tr- let's go tribe on Twitter. I think started it up with something, just just some sort of meme or, or gif of something, and and I had to, I had to mention. I said uh, the, the cleanup guy bunting in a in a tie game in the fifth on the road. Uh, at, at, at TD, whatever your handle is on Twitter, yeah, yeah, <laughs> is, is going one tribe KU. <laughs> Correct, uh, but but that's neither here nor there. But I, I think the Bieber thing is cool. I love the fact that he made it um, and, and deserves it. And you know, like we said, with, with and Lindor is unbelievable. I mean, I don't think we talk about him enough on the pod because we spend so much time on, on the guys that we're upset with or guys that are we're surprised by, but. You know, even on a day like yesterday, where you know, the, like we talked about, the Reds have been pitching pretty well, and uh, 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 you know, the, the Indians can't score early in the game. Lindor's two home runs kept him in it, kept Bieber there, and then you know, Roberto kind of finished it off, and they had some add-on runs later. But the at bats are good, Todd. Uh, you know, I'm watching this closely. You know, all the pitches that we take, the walks that we draw. I mean, we you know, Kipnis draws a bases loaded walk yesterday. Jose today. Um, uh, yesterday, you know, guys are guys are selective up there, and we we're we're a bitch to play right now, and I love that. You have to, and it's just it's so much better when they're playing better baseball. The season's more fun. I'm in a better mood. You know, like like true. It, it just everything puts me in a better mood when the Indians are playing well, right? I mean, I, I'm, I know I know you, and I know you feel the same way. Oh, I'm a, I'm, I'm, are, I'm I'm rolling. Feel great. Yes, you are. We're, <laughs> we're 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 a tough out right now, and you know, like I said earlier, it's almost a shame that this uh, All Star break has come when it's come because we're really playing some great ball. But you know, it's nice, obviously, with the All Star break and the All Star game being in Cleveland. You know, it really gets to showcase our city, which is a nice thing. And um, you know, with having four All Stars local, 
I think Carlos and Frankie will get monster ovation because, you know, they're our guys. And obviously, you know, what you were saying before about Frankie, I think we do take him for granted. And it's not that we take him for granted. It's almost like he's so great. How, how many times can we say he's so great? You know what I mean? So it's kind of like you can highlight the guys that actually like, hey, Jake Bowers today or, you know, Robo. And, you know, he's having a surprising big speed. Frankie just doing what he does always. And he continues to be one of the best players in the league. And, We'll enjoy him for Zoom <laughs> Oh, stop. Don't go there. Hey, now. <laughs> All right, Matt and Todd Derry, the Derry Brothers Tribecast. You hear us on uh, WaitingForNextYear.com and wherever you get your podcasts. Indians have won six in a row. This is the All-Star Break edition. All right, so give me your story for this week um, because obviously the Home Run Derby is Monday. I- I'll be honest. I'm going to watch it only because Carlos is in it. If he wasn't, I just... I've been kind of done with it the last few years. I'd be interested in seeing who can hit the scoreboard and all that because I think that would be kind of cool. Um, I'm trying to remember the last time I saw somebody hit a ball off the scoreboard. Was it I Mark? Tell you what Mar- was it Mark McGuire? Was, was it Mark McGuire? I was there. It, this is not long ago. It was me, Dad, and Brian Agan <laughs> in 1997. He hit it off of Oral Hershiser and he destroyed it and it's a B in the Budweiser sign. And I've never seen a bigger blast in my life. It was unbelievable. That so, was the last time it happened. So it was McGuire. Yes. When he was on the Cardinals. Yeah. Just unbelievable. The other day, by the way, we were talking about people that have hit it up to the Pepsi porch at Comerica Park, like up, up, up high in right field. Russell Brannion, you were there. I was there. That was that was the day Brannion hit a bomb off, a, hit a grand slam off a of, uh, Hideo Nomo to break it open. We blow it in the ninth. Carse gives up a walk off to Juan Gonzalez. Steak dinner, Steve. <laughs> yes. And then like. Two days later on the, on the radio station when I was working at the fan, Stoney Wojo had Bobby Higginson on, and Stoney asked Higginson about seeing me in the clubhouse on Saturday. He's like, oh, you should have seen Derry. He was so upset. <laughs> it was classic. Thank you, baby. <laughs> that was when the Tigers were relevant. That was, that was a good time. What, Bobby uh, Higginson? Oh, that was right. He was, Bob, poor, Bob, poor Bobby was never a part of the good teams. So in the meantime... All-Star game this week, the street, first of all, the city this weekend supposedly has been really jumping downtown. I have a couple friends who went to the fan fest, said it was really cool, great thing for kids. A lot of people signing autographs, all that stuff. Um, You know, so that fan fest is great. Today, uh, as we record this, the Futures game is going on with two Indians prospects starting, Nolan Jones at third. And the uh, second half, or the main half, should I say, of the uh, Jan Gomes trade, Daniel Johnson played BH and getting the start. I think that's pretty cool. I love it. And Nolan he, Nolan Jones yeah. will, Nolan Jones will start the second half with the Rubber Ducks. He's going to Double A. The kids the kids a real deal. Well, listen, that's the future of third. He is. Yeah. And he's our best prospect right now. I mean, he'd get you the most on the open market for sure. Um, but obviously you're going to hang on to him. Um, and then the celebrity all-star game is, is tonight and, you know, nothing like them charging me 270 bucks for two tickets to a game that I have zero desire to attend, nor can I attend. Uh, that's another story for another day. And then, you wow. know, home run derby, home run derby and the all-star game, you know, again, I think this is great for the city. I'm not bashing it in any way. I think it's fantastic, but... They basically told me that my tickets were going to be five hundred and five bucks for the home run derby per ticket, and five hundred and forty five dollars for my tickets for the All Star game. I- I'm sorry, I'm not spending eleven hundred dollars to go to an exhibition game. That's crazy. But you know, I offered them to other people in my group who took them. But I am, I- I'm sorry. You and I went in 1981 with mom and dad. Got the great photo of us, you and mom, from the '81 All Star game. We went in 97. I was at the Home Run Derby and the All-Star Game in 97. Saw Sandy's homer. You know, again, we'll probably never get it again as long as we're alive. But it's just, it's not something I'm willing to spend that kind of money on. If I'm going gonna, if I'm gonna to break the bank, it's going to be for the World Series ticket. Right. You know, I mean, oh, I, sure. This is still an exhibition game. That's a lot of money. And it, it has nothing to do with the Indians. It's MLB who's got this price. Yeah. But I just wouldn't do it. 
No, I have nothing. And, 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 you know, there's a lot of, you know, chatter about, oh, well, the only reason the Indians got it was Paul Dolan said, we'll take Chief Wahoo off the uniforms, all this. Stuff. However, right. however it got done, it got done. And there are plenty of cities that are waiting for the game or trying to get the game back and, and can't get it. Like you said, it's a great showcase. I love that four Indians are in it. I love that Carlos is starting because he is Mr. Indian all of a sudden now. And, you know, his second tour of duty back and having a, having a gr- monster year and saying all the right things. You know, he, along with the other Carlos Carrasco, who announced the other day that he's got leukemia, which is so scary. These guys have been so embraced here. And I know there's this uh, petition on Twitter to get Carlos Carrasco to throw out one of the first pitches tomorrow on Tuesday, which would be kind of cool. But, you know, there's at least for right now, like you said, we're playing well. We're in this thing, whether it's wild card or division. And four all-stars, and now to have this kind of feel-good story with rooting for Carrasco, Santana starting, boy, this sure beats about a month ago when everybody was ready to, to burn the stadium down. Yeah, including me and you. I totally agree with you. Uh, they're also honoring CC Sabathia at the all-star game. And this is an interesting conversation, and I kind of want to get your take on this, which is, you know, CC pitched his first eight years in Cleveland. I mean, I love the guy, but it's hard for me to get past how terrible he was in the 07 playoffs when, when we needed him the most. Uh, but he ended up, you know, he ended up pitching Milwaukee into the playoffs in 08. He got us Carlos Santana. Uh, and, you know, he uh, ended up, uh, he was World Series MVP, right? When when the Yankees won the World Series? Yes. I think he won World Series MVP. Correct. And he's an all-time great. What's interesting is, I want to say that the stat was there's only two other left-handed pitchers that have won more games than him. Randy Johnson and Steve Crafton. Is, and, and that he's definitely a... Do you look at him and say Hall of Fame? He's going to make it. but and, and maybe first ballot, but do you think he's a Hall of Famer? No, I don't. I, I, and I, I'll, I'll, I think that him being the way he is, he beat uh, alcoholism, or I don't know if he beat it, but he, he was very open about it. Um, in a game that is de- in desperate need of some African American sh- uh, faces in the, in the front of the crowd, he's always been there. <clears throat> he's great in the community. He does this podcast with Ryan Rucco in New York, where you know he, he's he's a he's a good ambassador for the game. And because he's six foot seven and you know this big, this big dude, I think there's something original about him. And it helps that he went to New York and won that World Series with the Yankees. If we would have traded him, well, we traded him to Milwaukee, but if the Indians would have traded him to the Braves and he would have won one there or something, it wouldn't have been the same thing. I think that the New York influence... Casey Blake, I mix that up. CC got us Michael Brandon. So, obviously, that, that did his job. I agree with you, though. If he goes to the Anaheim or you know Los Angeles Angels or whatever, and he wins a World Series in relatively, relative anonymity... He probably doesn't get this kind of love. I mean, I was when they announced that they were doing, they were honoring him at the All Star Game. I was kind of surprised. I felt like that only is happening because the All Star Game is in Cleveland, and if it was in any other city, they probably wouldn't. But you know, they've really rolled out the red carpet all year. I've seen lots of tributes to him all over the the uh, uh, you know all over the country. Which you know, again, I'm a CC fan. Sure, but I didn't realize that he was this important to the game of baseball I mean, I'm not saying he's being treated like Mariano Rivera retiring but he's certainly getting quite a uh, you know, red carpet I guess you could say on the way out he is and I think that uh, you know like, like I said I, I just I, I think part of it is who he is as a figure you know um, big yep. tall left handed pitcher uh, uh, really helped with the RBI program and, and the African American baseball community, and I think Rob Manfred looks at that and being in New York that helps for sure. Yeah. You know what other six foot seven left handed African American pitcher can you name in the league? Never. That's that's okay. had Al Mormon. Uh, well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but what, what about and how many wins does CC have? I think he's high two hundred. You're he's right. Not going to reach three hundred. Right, he's not reaching three hundred. He's third most wins, but behind Carlton and uh, Randy Johnson. Well, I, I think it's I think it's cool, and I thought the Indians did a good job already with with um, honoring him. Now, based on it was, they did a nice job. Yeah, based on the All Star game, it'll be it'll be good too, and it'll be nice to see our crowd get 
I hope they stand and applaud and, and do the right thing. And um, I, th- you know. I think they will for sure. I think I think you'll see. You know, MLB when they're running things rather than like locally, we're running things. They know how to time these things out to get the maximum amount of eyeballs and people watching in the stands. Like when I went to the game where they honored TC, they did something before the game, like 15 minutes before the game. I hate that. Half, no, right. Half the stadium was empty. You know, and and the people that were in there weren't paying attention. They redid it in about the fifth inning, and then everybody stood and applauded. But you know, MLB knows how to handle this stuff, and I'm sure they'll put it on TV. So it'll be good. All right, before we get into one other may, uh, important issue, Todd's going to tell us about the Center for Advanced Dentistry, Dr. Ben Hornstein, who is on board as a new subscriber, as Gary D. used to say, uh, with us here on the Dairy Brothers Tribecast. So let me tell you a little bit. It is the Center for Advanced Dentistry is Northeastern Ohio's premier dental practice, offering cutting-edge dental procedures and treatment options in a fun and stress-free atmosphere. Perfection is their trademark, and your overall health and happiness matter most to them. Their office is warm and inviting, and I can tell you that I'm in there. That's my dentist, and they're very warm and inviting, and they offer me a very unique experience that I don't receive from a traditional dental practice, and that's the truth. You can't get stand-up comedy from your dentist unless your dentist is Jim Watley or Dr. Ben Hornsby. <laughs> that's true. But it all, <laughs> that's true. And he loves Cleveland sports and Ohio State. So you can discuss that with him, too. But during your visit, his amazing team will begin your appointment by listening and understanding about your fears and overall needs. From routine checkups to full-mouth makeovers, they provide an unmatched level of care for you and your smile. And you can check them out at cfad.net, which is the Center for Advanced Dentistry, or you can call them at 216 215- Five nine five one seven one zero. Check him out. The great Dr. Ben Hornsby. Love it, and gra- so glad that Ben's on with us and uh, is a uh, a regular listener to the Dairy Brothers Tribecast. All right, we've talked about the All Stars. We've talked about how well this team is playing. Obvious. Even Bobby Bradley today, Todd, had an RBI and did the and did the finger guns yesterday, at second base. And the big kid hit double yesterday to break open the game in the eighth inning. I love it. I love it. And you knew he would have his struggles making the adjustment, but uh, today was was cool to see him go the other way. But the big news. Yep. Are you ready for this? Danny Salazar. Danny Salazar (laughs) is going to pitch for Akron this week. Multiple innings. Oh, my God. No way. Did you tell Clark and Ellen the good news? (laughs) (laughs) Can you believe it? I mean, I'm in shock. I'm in shock. He's leaving Arizona. Okay, I'm going to give you, oh, he has 30 days. I was going to set him over under, but once he, what I was told was once he gets to Akron, the 30-day rehab assignment clock begins. So after those 30 days, they got to make a decision. So I think you're going to see him in August. I do. I think you'll see him in the bullpen as like a long man. They're, they're grooming him as a starter, obviously, but... I don't. Th- I think by the time he's back, they're not going to need him to start. But but they'll use him in multiple innings out of the bullpen. And the key that for the key for Danny is getting his velocity back up. What I saw was that you know we've been throwing ninety four. We need ninety nine Danny Salazar to return, or else. Well, I, 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 no, I don't know about ninety nine. I, I would take ninety six. Yeah, but I'm saying he was at his most effective when he was touching ninety nine, and I always thought that if he could translate that into a pen roll, which he's going to end up having, in my opinion, you got to be hitting 99. Although then again, the Indians have the number one ranked bullpen in, in, in uh, baseball. And I think in terms of like hard throwers, they're about you know, 27 out of 30. So who knows? Well, the other thing too is, is, is well, there's two points that I want to make. Number one, it's a mental thing with him. I, I think his arm is fine. I think the doctors have said it's fine. I, I hope that in front of the big lights, not that, you know, Canal Park or whatever they call it in Akron, uh, God bless the Rubber Ducks and uh, their famous intern, uh, the great Noah Taluki, but, um, you know, I, will, will he be able to handle it? Will, will he, after three pitches, you know, look at his catcher and say, something's not right? Uh, something's not been right for years. And it's been in, and I'm not saying it's, it's all in his head, and I, it's just a weird mental thing. That with him in yeah. terms of letting go and everything else, and 
you know, Trevor Bauer, you know, was it Garrett Cole the other day on his 110th pitch hit 101 or something? And of course that yeah. that Houston yeah. gun, that Houston gun, and what they're doing in Houston, I don't know what they're doing down there. They got some sort of weird, uh, you know, concoction that they have in their clubhouse. But hey, if you know what Jim Rome used to say, you're not cheating, you're not trying. <laughs> rack him. Um, <laughs> but that's number one. And number two, you're right. So let's say he's fine. Let's say he looks good in Akron. They move him up to Columbus. He's getting people out. They say, all right, we're putting him in the bullpen. Who are you taking out of the bullpen? Right now? Tyler Olson. D. Tyler, the roster. You know, it's Nake, and by the way, Nake and Bake. Nake and Bake. Nake, Nake was been good. He has. You have to admit. Even you have to admit Nake was been good. He, I've officially gotten off this case, and I... I have declared that the Naquin Blue Blow Platoon is working for me. It is. It is 2016, the 2019 version of Lonnie and Geyer from 2016. It's working for me. I mean, no problem. Lo- yeah. lo- as long as it doesn't turn into J. Mike and DeLucci. That's right. Who would I get rid of? I'll tell you who I'd get rid of. And I think he has options. And he was very good for a while, and he hasn't been so good lately. AJ chilling with the Coley Cole. He's uh, he's, he's the he, guy who come on. He, yeah, well, he he won us the game the other day. He's been fine. I'm saying he's been fine. But if someone's got to go for Danny, that's the guy I'm choosing. Yeah. I don't want to here. Here's your other option. Simber, no. Clippard, no. Goody, right now, you can't take him out. He's like set up man. And no. Olsen. Maybe. Like to get rid of him, but Maybe. He, he's out of options. He's out of options. Cares and 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 Ali and Wigren. Neither of those guys are going. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, they're AJ Cole. I mean, it seems like we have so many. I love when Tyler Clippard comes in a game. So I'm like, oh yeah, he's on our team <laughs> every time. Well, this happened the other day with AJ Cole. Between him and Clippard, every time they come in, it's like I forget that they're there. We were always so set with the same guys we used for so long. You know, it was it was like a rotation. It was kind of like Vinny and Joe Smith into the closer for a while, into Perez. And then those guys kind of went away, and then it became Cody was the setup man, and then Cody and Miller and Joe Smith and Shaw. You know, it was those guys for a long time, and this is kind of the new era. But we're not used to it. Right. And of course, uh, back, you know, you go back to you go back to the the grind the wedge grinding team of '07, and they had the two Raphaels and, oh, and Rafi right, Rafi left, and Jobo and, Jen, and Jenny Lewis. And Jenny Lewis in the seventh. He now of right. BFF status of LTV, Al Pulowski. What about 05 with Bob Howry and Scott Sauerbach, Arthur Rhodes, and Raphael Betancourt in front of Bob Whitman? Oh, that Jesus. That was a great pen. Bobby Howry. Bobby Howry could pitch. He threw, threw hard. Threw hard. One good year. We had him for one good year. That 05 team, I will maintain, had they not choked, that might have been our World Series championship. That team was good. It was good. And they just choked at the last week of the season. God, Bob Wick. Remember Ozzy, Ozzy Kian gave the choke sign? Of course. That famous picture when they, they swept us the last week and they won the World Series that year. Yeah, they did. God, can you believe that 05 White Sox? I think Paul Canerco hit 750 against us in that season. He just destroyed us. I think us. he hit 750. I think he hit 750 in his career against us. Him and Joe Creedy. Those bitches, Creedy. man. They what killed about us. Scott put Sednick in center field. Scotty Pods? Sure. In a walk-off homer in that World Series that year, in 05 against the Astros. Was Jeff Blum on that 05 team, or was that was he on the Astros yeah. that they went against? No, no, he was on the Astros. Gosh, I can I can I, I can I can recall that 05 uh, World Series like it was yesterday. I watched a lot. I watched a lot. I watched a lot of that alone, if you know what I mean. <laughs> hey, uh. let's, let's not reset that. All right. Uh, <laughs> I I watched a lot of that by myself. All right, so uh, <laughs> hey, transition, transition. Um, yes, yes. All right, so I no, no, no. I'm saying there was a, tra- a life transition right there. I know. I thought you, and, and I didn't know how you were gonna transition. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So anyway. they're playing good ball. We're uh, we're. Um, we're getting the yeah. twins Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now I've heard conflicting reports on what we're doing out of the break, out of the out of the All Star break. Andre Knott reported something yesterday. Now he's reporting something today. Have you heard the, any any news? Uh, in, in terms of what? As, as who, you know, I who are pitching? So I, 
Oh, who we're pitching? Well, I, it probably depends on whether or not Bieber's going um, going to pitch in the All Star game. I would imagine, right? I, I would think maybe. I'm guessing Bauer and Clevenger would start Friday and Saturday. I, I would think, unless they want to split these guys up. I will say that yours truly and Mrs. LD will be at the game Friday night, and I will be at the game Sunday with executive producer Jeremy Goldberg. Nice. Got that. And 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 friend of the pod Jeremy Bilski will be handling Saturday. So we got the whole series covered. What about the core four? With, what about the core four? With, what about the core four with Brian Silver? We need to make T-shirts. Core four. That's right. That's right. Ag is turning fifty in a couple weeks. Oh, jeez. That's right. We got to get him. We we'll have to do a salute to Ag on the podcast. We'll have to have him on. Well, we'll have to. And we'll have all of our recording equipment and regular open and everything back. Don't you worry, everybody that's yes. listening today. We apologize. Today, today we're on a different. We're on a different app. We're testing it out. This is a, just a one and done. So. All right, man. Well, uh, good stuff. This was uh, fun as always. Good to talk about a team that's winning and uh, whether they're bunting or not, whatever. Everything's working right now. And today, today was just an. I mean, that Ohio. We, we spit in the Ohio Cup this weekend. Oh, that was that was a, that was a domination. You know, I I am thrilled that we're fifty and thirty eight heading into the All Star break, feeling good. I'm thrilled to be sitting outside doing this podcast, looking at one of my favorite views in, in, in the entire country, peace and quiet. I'm in a good place. Tribe's in a good place. I feel good heading into that second half, these. I really do. I, I think a strong second half is coming. The Twins have a lighter schedule than we do, but I feel good at how this team is playing. And as much shit as we have given Tito, me, rightfully, you know, so, I, I, I can tell you that I have to. Having this team, 50 and 38, is a really big accomplishment. It is. It is. They started the year with Hanley Ramirez hitting cleanup, Eric Stamets at short, Brad Miller playing oh, second. You know, um, then Cargo, then Cargo. Yeah, Carlos we Gonzalez. The who the, this week too. Yeah, the Cubs got rid of. I mean, they're playing the kids now. Let them play. You know, and and Mercado getting a day off today was good. That was the right move. He's struggling a little bit at the plate. There comes Greg Allen and and four hits. Who would who would have thunk it? But maybe that maybe you keep Allen on the roster and you eliminate one of the guys in the pen, and you let that kid play a little bit more. He adds a little something. Had you know pinch ran yesterday. So, all right, man. Well, we'll do it again next week. Hopefully, this uh, the All Star stuff works well. The weather's good, and then we come out uh, of the break and and then take it to the Twins. Let's hope so. I can't wait for next weekend. All right, buddy. There you go. You're the man. All right. And everybody in Cleveland, enjoy that All-Star game and Home Run Derby on Monday and Tuesday and represent our city well. That has been the Dairy Brothers Tribecast for another week, brought to you by our friends at the Center for Advanced Dentistry. We'll talk to you again next week.